Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third episode of uh, Google Analytics video series presented by Human Analytics. My name is Liu Su, and I'll be your host today. In the previous two episodes, we've been talking about more general topics of Google Analytics, about why is the importance of the tool and what kind of framework you should use in tackling analysis in Google Analytics. Today, let's go a little bit deeper into the tool and uh, talk about metrics in Google Analytics, more specifically, the nine fundamental metrics you can use to crush almost all analysis in Google Analytics. In this specific episode, we're going to introduce you those metrics. And in the next few episodes, we're going to expand on these metrics and show you what analysis you can do to understand various aspects of your web and digital presence. Let's begin. Before talking about Google Analytics metrics, I think it will be helpful to talk about what makes a good metric in the first place. In human analytics, we like to conduct three sanity checks for all metrics that are going through our head and to determine whether these metrics are legitimate metrics that can help us towards the goal that we're trying to achieve. The first sanity check is that the metric has to be relevant to the business objective. For example, uh, if your objective is to increase the total amount of e-commerce sales on your website, it's not relevant to measure the amount of Facebook likes you have on your Facebook page. The second sanity check is that it has to be bi-directional. It means that it has to go up or down based on your actions. And it actually it have to show you whether you're closer to that objective you're trying to accomplish by going up or down. For example, let's take the same objective of in increasing e-commerce sale. It will not make sense to use the total amount of pages on your website as a metric because it tends to not go up or down based on your actions. And uh, it's also not very relevant in measuring how close you are in terms of accomplishing your goal. Finally, the metric have to be time relevant. By that, I mean how to change soon enough for you to see the outcome of your actions immediately and get real-time feedbacks. Let's hypothesize a metric that will change five years from today that will tell you very accurately all the action you take today. It's not very helpful because in five years, your business objective will change and you probably will need feedback much, much more frequently than every five years. So that metric will not be a good metric, even if it exists, even if it's very relevant, very accurate. So with all these in mind, let's talk about the nine Google Analytics metrics that we picked, believed to be the nine fundamental metrics that you can use in all Google Analytics analysis. This is a screenshot of our alpha in which we introduce these nine metrics. As you can see, we divide those metrics into three categories based on the business objective these metrics help you accomplish and also to facilitate memorization understanding of these metrics. The first metric category is traffic, which include the metric users, sessions, and page views. All three metrics in this category are designed to give you an overview of the amount of traffic that are coming to your site in general. Each of the metrics in this category correspond to a specific level of analysis in Google Analytics. For example, the metric in the metric users tells you overall how many people visited your website in a given time frame, which summarizes your traffic on the user level. The metric sessions tell you how many people, how many sessions your users engage with you during a specific time frame, the amount of page views correspondingly tells you how many pages people visited in a specific time frame. So these three time frame, these three levels, I call them level of analysis, and Google do collects data on these three levels by default. In my opinion, understanding level analysis is one of the most important skills in Google Analytics. That's why I'm going to attach a blog post that are related to the concept of unit analysis to help you better understand what I really mean by analyzing and summarizing on a different level. Because all the three categories in this, all the three metrics in this category are pretty clear, there are no additional subcategories that are needed to divide them up. So the second category here is traction, 
which include metrics including number of new sessions, number of returning sessions, and bounce rate. Metrics in this category helps you further understand the composition and quality of your incoming traffic. So just based on this definition, it's fairly obvious that there are going to be two subcategories in this general category. So the composition of traffic, more specifically, number of returning and number of new sessions, and the quality of your traffic represented by bounce rate, which is a good representation of landing page experience of users. Let's start with traffic composition. Here we use this number of new sessions and number of returning sessions as a metric to illustrate the composition of traffic, which is quite different from what Google Analytics does. Because if you go onto the homepage of Google Analytics, they illustrate this by showing you with one, only one metric, percentage of new sessions. We don't really like that metric because let's recall the basic principle we use to choose metrics. We don't think that person new sessions is either time relevant or it's bi-directional. What do I mean by this? So for example, let's think about an increase in the percentage of new sessions. An increasing percentage of new sessions might be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how the components of it changes. It might mean that you have more new users or new sessions coming onto your site. It might also mean that you have less returning sessions coming onto your site. So it's very dubious whether the change is good or bad for your business. That's why we much prefer to use this component, which offer much straightforward explanation of changes in a website. Then for traffic quality, we use one of the most popular metrics in web analytics, bounce rate. Just to make sure everyone is clear of the concept of bounce. A bounce is calculated as the percentage of sessions in which users visit your homepage, not performing any actions that are recordable by Google Analytics, and leave the site right afterward. Even though the cause of bounce rate might be due to multiple reasons, it is still considered one of the best indicator of the attractiveness of your website to users upon first glance aka the landing page experience of your website. The third category is engagement, which include the metric average session times, average pages per session, and conversion rate. Metrics in this category offers you information both about how well your user engaged with your website and whether they actually convert and accomplish your business objective ultimately in the end. Engagement just based on the definition again, can be divided up into two subcategories, session quality and conversion. Session quality include the metrics average session time and average, session, average pages per session. Those two metrics working together are considered one of the most accurate measurement of how engaged users are on your website. And ultimately, on the other hand, the second category we have is conversion. Conversion, to measure conversion, we have here conversion rate, which is probably the penultimate metric for web analytics, telling you the percentage of sessions that result in user performing some action that you want them to perform, whether that's making a purchase on your website or signing up for newsletters. Even though in order to accurately track conversion rate, you need to set up Google Analytics further. So it, it does not track it by default. I still very highly recommend you to do that because tracking conversion is probably one of the most important thing you can do with your website. So here are the nine metrics that you can use to understand and record all aspects of the user experiences on your website. After introducing all these metrics, let's talk about how you can find them on Google Analytics. Almost all the metrics we show you here are accessible once you log into Google Analytics upon the first screen in the base, most basic dashboard. So illustrate here, for example, you can find users, you can find sessions, you can find number of sessions per user, page views, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are only three metrics you cannot find in the screen, which is number of new sessions and number of returning sessions and conversion rate. You can find number of new sessions and number of returning sessions under audience, behavior, 
a new versus returning tab of Google Analytics. Right here, number of new sessions and returning sessions are here. And for bounce rate, you can access bounce rate under the conversion rate goals overview session of Google Analytics. It also shows you, so goal conversion rate is what you're looking for here. And you might have multiple goal conversion rates depending on how many goals you have set for your business. And I'm going to attach a blog post about setting up You might have multiple goals depending on how many objectives you have on your website. And you will have a separate conversion rate for each of the objectives that you may have. We're going to talk about setting up conversions and uh, to, uh, setting, we're going to talk about how to actually set up conversions in future videos of this series. But right now, we're going to attach a blog post with the notes to help you better understand how and how to set up goals in Google Analytics to most accurately reflect your business objectives. And that concludes our video series and session today. In the next session, we're going to show you how to use all the metrics we've introduced you today to conduct detailed Google Analytics analysis and get real business insight from these nine metrics. And until then, see you next time.